சாட் வீடியோ ஆன் பண்ணணுமா நான் தெரியணும்னா ஆப்பா இருக்கு ஆனந்தலிமா உங்க வீடியோ ஆன் பண்ணுங்க வீடியோ ஆன் பண்ணவா ஆமா மேடம் சரி ஆமா ஆன் பண்ணிட்டேன் ஓகே ஓகே ஜான் பால் சார் இந்த மாதிரி நம்ம லைன்ல வந்துட்டாங்க மேடம்
சார் கனெக்ட் ஆகல மேடம் இன்னும் வரல வாட்ஸ்அப் <laughs> and there is another one person uh, dr sivakuma he is a community member and he is a terminator of addiction i was from dr sivakuma to introduce himself to the person and they are welcome just yes, teacher hi very good morning all and so ice break aagudhu arum full sire maatra ice enak break aadha sir kekudhu very morning to all i am dr please kumar assistant professor college gangnam one to national university unga voice break aagudhu sir sir voice ah hello hello ungaloda voice break aagudhu sir ena clear ah kekka mudiyadhu sariya kekkalingale சிவா சார் பேசுறதா சிவா சார் பேசுறது எனக்கு வாய்ஸ் கொஞ்சம் பிரேக் ஆகுற மாதிரி தான் இருக்கு ஜான்பால் சார் உங்களுக்கு எப்படி இருக்கு கொஞ்சம் பிரேக் ஆகுது It is our privilege and honor to welcome Dr. E.S. Palini Chami, Research Professor, East Coast Life Science Institute, Gangnam Wanju National University, Republic of Korea. As a resource person to this webinar, I would like to thank him for accepting our invitation. It is my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Brindam Madam, Assistant Professor, Department of Animal Health and Management, Alakapai University. Madam fixed the resolution in a couple of days for this webinar series. My cordial welcome to the head, Department of Zoology, Dr. R. Anandavalli, Madam, for a keen interest in us in this webinar. I am glad to welcome Dr. J. R. J. J. Janpal, Organizing Secretary of this webinar. I am happy to welcome the Organizing Committee members, Dr. G. Gopinath, and Ms. Ayam Karthiye. Their continuous support made this webinar possible. I extend a very warm welcome to Prof. Ananda Krishna, Head, Department of Information Technology, who support as technical. Above all, my hearty welcome to all professors, research scholars, and student participants are with us. Once again, I welcome one and all. I am very glad to introduce our guest of honor, Dr. S. Palli Chami. He is a strong researcher. He is having 10 years of research experience. He has 34 papers in peer-reviewed journals with a total impact factor of 127. His, his H index is 10. He has participated 
17 national and international conferences and presented to research papers. I ensure that is very helpful. I wish to enjoy that letter. Thank you. Uh, sir, sir, I have this Please carry on. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for such a nice uh, introduction. Uh, good morning, one and all, thank on you. present here. Yeah. First, I would like to thank head of the department and the organizing committee who organizes such a wonderful conference. And the uh, organizing Department of Zoology and Armon Place the Emma College Tirputur Sergei. And also I extend my thanks to Dr. M. Prinda, Assistant Professor, Department of Animal Health and Management University. They give the good opportunity to me. I am very happy to share my uh, some discuss some information on the overview of emergency infectious disease and its control measures. So in this topic, I will talk about the general information of emergency disease and the re-emergency disease and what are the factors involved in the <coughs> emergency disease. And especially I focus the Spacious flu and the Spanish flu and COVID-19. And also I further focus on the natural impact of uh, polysaccharide, I think, in the natural product, uh, especially the polysaccharide in the major role in the control of emergency disease. So, coming to the introduction, so what is emergency infection disease? So, we are simply says it's a new disease, new problem. So, it's caused by uh, newly identified pathogens, which was incident, whose incidence in people has increased recently, which representing last two years. And also it's a threatening to upcharge in the near future. So the, according to the National Institute of Allergy and the in Infection Disease, they define the emergency infection disease in the three types of angle. So first one is outbreak of unknown diseases. And the second one is known diseases that are rapidly increasing in incidence or geographic range in the earlier. And the third one is precedence of infection diseases that cannot be controlled. So during the uh, last 20 years, we faced a lot of 30 number of uh, new emergent diseases. So which including the coronavirus and the SARS and the HIV infection and the lymph disease, uh, Nipah virus, influenza, yellow fever, and the Henda virus, and Zika virus like this. So why we are giving the most important to the emergency infection disease? So it's because uh, the emergency infection disease is one of the leading cause of death in the worldwide. So it's representing, so 26% of death and 28% of global pardon infection problem. Especially in South, Southeast Asia, the 14 million people are death annually reported. So within 40% of death is caused by emergency infection disease. As in India, the infection disease are responsible for half of the total disease problem. So next, the re-emergency infection disease. So what is the here? Re-emergency infection disease means the old diseases, but new problems. So which, which was previously controlled, but once again, has reason to be a no significant health problem. So it also referred to alternately, which was previously confined from one area, and now the disease has been spread to other area. So in for some, some of the example for re-emergency infection disease, so mainly malaria, tuberculosis, cholera, and influenza, pneumococcal disease, and coneria. So 
so what are the factors majorly contributing to these diseases? So here I discuss some uh, six factors which participate in the emergency and the emerging diseases. So the first one is human de demographics and behavior. And the second one is advances in technology and in the industry. And the third one is economic development and the land use. And fourth one is dramatic increases in international travel and commerce. And the fifth one is microbial adaptation and the changes. And sixth one is breakdown of public health measures. So coming to the human demographics and the behavior. So this chart, when, <clears throat> when the population density increase, we meet the insufficient infrastructure facility. So for the case of Tengu fever, so in the lack of infrastructure facility, the people store the uh, water in open container, like bottles and tires and uh, barrel and pots like this. So in this situation, the aid is AFP. So, you know, it's a vector of Tengu fever, which, were, which lay the EX in the in container and uh, promote the breedings. So by removing these habits, the mosquito have fewer opportunity to lay the X. So this type of statistic is called source reduction statistic. So next, apart from this, some of the behavior was displayed here. So first one is unsafe sexual practice. So the uh, unsafe sexual practice <coughs> is uh, caused some sexual related disease like HIV, conaria, syphilis. So our second one behavior is changes in agriculture and food production patterns. So this image, this image show the common relationship between the agriculture product and human health. So the agriculture production can improve the human health by enhancing the nutrition, which increase uh, and also which increase the resistant to infection diseases also. At the same time, the uh, deficiency of nutrition uh, from the agriculture product, it causes some illness also. However, some freshwater habitats, like the usage of water for uh, irrigation on or uh, agriculture or other inputs, which increase the risk of vector point disease, such as uh, malaria and cystosomiasis, like this disease, uh, possible to uh, transmit it from the agriculture resources to human health. So next, the advanced technology in uh, technology and industry. So nowadays, the industry of peoples are expect like this, I think, more production, more mass production in a short time. So this type of behavior, they, uh, is a chance of accidental contamination. So the, and also it multiply the effect of such a contamination. So for the example, the half burger meat, the preparation of half burger meat is contaminated by Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli is a gram negative bacteria which causes a hemolytic urogenic syndrome. So the another one thing is the feeding of cattle byproduct which also possible to cause the bovine spring spongiform encephalitis. So next one is the transmission of blood and organs from one person to other person, which is possible to transmission of infection too. So next factor is economical development and land use. So when, when we change the environmental condition, I think ecology, uh, the vector, the waterborne diseases and the vector borne diseases also transmission and uh, also multiply. So another one thing is deforestation. So the deforestation forces the animals into closer human contact. So which increase the possibility for agents to opening the species barrier between the animals and the humans. So next one is, <clears throat> Dramatic increases in international travel and commerce. So, for example, the incident of uh, tuberculosis and influenza. 
uh, transmission is caused by long flight travels. So, and also the light faci livestock facilities, which increase the possibility of virus and arthropod through the transmission. And also the international trade of goods and services through the international border, which help to spread the disease by from, um, from one area to other geographical places. And also the travelers are exposed to a variety of pathogens of many of them have never uh, encountered by this problem. It's, I think they face a newly stage. So therefore the traveler already, the no develop immunity developed. So another one thing is microbial adaptation and changes. So nowadays the mostly the bacterial diseases are uh, treated by the commercially available antibiotics. So the over the antibiotics, however, the taking the antibiotics when they are not needed, the, in this condition, with accelerate the emergence of antibiotic resistance. And also the over usage of antibiotics lead to cause a bacterial to become a resistant to the particular antibiotics. So in this condition, the infection will never, will never, uh, I think the common infection will no longer to be treatable. And also it can be affect, no exception, any age people, any country people, it also, this was affected. And the other thing is finally, the antibiotic resistance lead to the longer hospital stays and higher medical cost and more death. So for example, the influenza virus is renewed itself uh, every year. So this, can, this situation giving rise to annual epidemics and necessity of development of a new influenza vaccine strain. So another one example is Stabilococcus aegyrus. It's a gram-positive bacteria which causes a, a skin-related disease like pimples, foil, cellulitis, and scaled skin syndrome, and also uh, life-threatening disease like pneumonia and toxic shock syndrome. The toxic shock syndrome means a sudden high, high fever. We feel a sudden high fever and also low blood pressure and vomiting sense and diarrhea. And also a rust resembling in a sunburn, particularly on the farms and soils. So, the evaluation of antibiotic resistance uh, Staphylococcus aegyrus. This figure shows the Staphylococcus aegyrus evaluation uh, in antibiotic resistant condition. So in 1950s, the Staphylococcus aegyrus is evaluated into penicillin resistant Staphylococcus aegyrus. And in 1960s, the same uh, pathogen is evaluated as a methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So it was called as uh, MRSA. And after the same uh, pathogen is evaluated in 1990, it's a vancomycin resistant endrococci. It's a VRE. And 1997, the, say, the vancomycin intermediate resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So uh, recently, the same Staphylococcus bacteria is evaluated itself like vancomycin resistant is, uh, Staphylococcus aureus is called as a VRSA. So the pathogenesis, the pathogenesis mostly <clears throat> The Staphylococcus aureus is caused the pathogenic effect uh, both human as well as animals. In uh, humans, uh, in humans, uh, when the pathogen is entry uh, through the nozzle and mouth something, so at that time they uh, cause a nozzle and a mucosal wound. And after it enter the body, it spread, uh, it multiply itself and uh, spread uh, some of the disease like boil and carbonyl and uh, uh, pneumonia like this disease. And it's lead to uh, causing the diarrhea and, uh, and also the toxic, uh, toxic shock and uh, bladder infection. So 
apart from this, this uh, Cephalococcus aureus cause some infection in animals. So like uh, mastitis in cattle, sheep and goat. So which means the fever and the fever, high fever and lots of appetites and enlargement and hardening. And another one thinking, so the milk production will stop and uh, they produce a thick and with pus is segregated. So this pathogen is uh, are most susceptible to the rabbit and mice. So treatments, the Stabilococcus aureus also treated by the commercial antibiotics, such as streptomycin, tetracycline, and erythromycin, and neomycin. So another uh, one factor is breakdown of public health measures. So the breakdown or lack of public health measures, such as uh, adequate sanitation and the immunization and and tuberculosis control had a dramatic effect on the emergence of infectious disease. And due to the economical problems, the poor population uh, performed both like a major reservoir as well as is a continual source of transmission. And the poverty and the malnutrition is a major impact factor. So it uh, causes a severe infection in the disease circle. And, uh, and some of the health measures like lack of funding and poor periodization of health funds and misplaced in security rather than preventing infrastructure and the failure to develop the adequate health delivery system. So the above the talk about the above the factors, the, uh, they are major factors involving the emergence of infection disease. So here. Uh, some of the important emergency diseases are given in the table. So the first one is pandemic influenza. This uh, caused by influenza virus. And 1967, the Mubarak hemorrhagic fever, it was caused by uh, Marburg virus. And uh, 1976, the salmonella disease, it was caused by salmonella entities. And 1976, the Ebola hemorrhagic fever uh, is caused by Ebola virus. And 1983, acute immunodeficiency syndrome is caused by human immunodeficiency virus. In 1989, hepatitis C, which was caused by hepatitis C virus. And 1988, Nipah encephalitis, which was caused by Nipah encephalitis. And 2002, we faced uh, VRSA infection. Vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, this means. So the, this uh, infection is caused by Vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. And 2003, we faced uh, uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome. It's one type of coronavirus related disease, SARS. So in 2015, we used the chick, uh, we faced the Chika virus problem. And currently, we are facing a uh, COVID-19 problem. But in this, this table shows the re-emergence in disease. So, um, the Tengu fever uh, is caused by Tengu virus and malaria and meningitis and uh, cystosomiasis and rabies, uh, cholera, polio, yellow fever, tuberculosis. These are the uh, re-emergency in, uh, infection diseases. So in, uh, in our presentation, I focus two type, two uh, important pandemic diseases. First one is uh, Spanish flu and the second one is COVID-19. So uh, I think uh, we are well known the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu is first started in 1980 uh, in Europe, uh, uh, some parts of Asia, but it has been uh, cited in the world history like it's a most devastating epidemic. Past flu or lack rapids. So during the period, I think, 19, 
eighty to nineteen, it killed more people than the Great War. So known today as a World War One. So second, the when compared with the four year mortality of the Black Death, uh, pony uh, Black Queen, uh, they in they cause a year uh, thousand. Three hundred forty-seven to uh, thousand three hundred fifty-one. The Spanish flu killed the people within one year, and it was estimated that five hundred million people was affected worldwide. Uh, it means one third of the planet population, and it was uh, estimated twenty millions to fifty millions were dead, including uh, six lakh seventy-five thousand Americans. So the first uh, symptoms, the first wave is started in the spring. It was a when the started the first wave. It was mild. There is no heavy problem. That time uh, we observed the common symptoms like chills, fever, and fatigue. Usually, which was uh, from that stage, we recovered from the situation after several days. And also, the number of deaths is very low. However, the second wave, the second wave is started in the fall of at the same year. It's a highly contagious wave. So, in the second wave, the people die within hours. So, this also the symptoms are developed uh, like the affected people's skin uh, turning to into blue color, and then the the affected people lungs are filled with some fluid so in the just one year 1918 the average life expectancy of american people plumped by a dozen of years so the problem come to the end so by the summer 1990 the flu pandemic come to the end which means The infected people are dead, or the immunity was developed in that body. So almost nine years later, now 2018, the researcher announced like the 1918 flu, the Spanish flu, is so deadly, and a group of three genes enable to the virus to weaken the victims, weaken branchial tips and lungs, and clear the way of bacterial pneumonia. Since 1918, there has been several other influenza pandemics, but none none as deadly. So some of the pandemic diseases here I point out. So a flu pandemic from 1957 to 58, which killed the which killed around two million people in worldwide, including some seventy thousand people in United States. Other one pandemic is uh, we faced in 1968 to 69, which killed approximately one million people, including 34,000 Americans. So recently, 2009 to 2010, we faced the Hachonian one problem. It's a swine flu problem, and now we are focusing. <coughs> we are facing in coronavirus uh, pandemic. Problem now, COVID nineteen. So each of the modern days, the uh, pandemic brings renewed the interest to attend the Spanish flu or forgotten pandemic. So prevention, those days, how to prevent the Spanish flu? So the people follow the some of the uh, preventive measures. They <clears throat> that people do not take any person. Clean uh, any person breath, and also they maintain their mouth and the teeth at, uh, in clean condition, and avoid the people those have the half half and the sneezing, and also they they don't visit the poorly ventilated places, and keep the warm <clears throat> and get fresh air and sunshine, and also don't use the drinking cup. Common drinking cups and towels, and they cover they cover with mouth when you half and sneezing, and 
also they are the people stay in home if suppose the people feel like a cold and also that uh, time the people uh, never used the transport they are uh, only uh, walking i think they used only walk and also they like our lockdown um, and uh, the people are close to the school churches churches and the theater halls etc so like this the spanish flu was prevented and <clears throat> so medical treatment so as there is no antivirus drugs to treat the virus and no antibiotics to treat the secondary bacterial infection so the doctors use the random assortment of medicine with different uh, effectiveness such as aspirin quinine and arsenine digitus etc and both the um, doctors recommended there traditional medicine like ayurveda combo also applied for the treatment of spanish flu so after 100 years back now we are facing the another one pandemic disease it's a coronavirus so the coronavirus are a members of family coronavirus which have the four uh, genera so with the first one is alpha coronavirus second one is theta coronavirus and third one is gamma coronavirus and delta coronavirus so usually in the gamma and the delta coronavirus is infected in birds and some of them only uh, cause some infection in mammals however the theta and the alpha coronavirus is harmful to the human as well as animal so the we are facing now covid 19 is came under the beta coronavirus and covid 19 is not only the first severe respiratory diseases before that we faced two types of um, coronavirus problem in 2002 severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus it's called sars coronavirus and 2012 we faced the middle east respiratory syndrome virus mrs is a coronavirus and this now we face a covid 19 is caused <coughs> this uh, new virus is diseases It's unknown before the but, but the outbreak began start in the wuhan china in december 2019 so where the, where to the coronavirus originate from so the coronavirus also cause diseases a widely variety of animal species Uh, in the case of sars coronavirus it transmitted from civet cats to human in china 2002 and uh, mers covid uh, coronavirus from dromedary camels to humans in saudi arabia in 2012 and 2019 now we are facing the covid 19 is suspected to be a, uh, from seafood of seafood market of uva so there are several known coronavirus uh, circulating in the animals but till now we not infected to the humans however a spill over even when the virus is circulating in the animal species that um, from the animal species to humans the coronavirus are transmitted so the current status of covid 19 the situation this data is uh, sources for world health organization uh, in 266 today yesterday data so the globally uh, 94 lakhs 700,473 people was confirmed cases and 4 lakhs 84,236 people was dead the top most countries uh, the first one is united states in the here they confirm 2 lakhs 36000 uh 23 sorry 23 lakhs 67064 cases was confirmed and only 21 uh, 645 people were dead so in the case of <coughs> india uh, today uh, they reported only 97 387 active active cases and 
2,95,880 cases were cured or discharged. And 15,645 people were dead. This data was reported by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, 27 today. So uh, the common symptoms. So what are the common symptoms? So in the, when the <clears throat> corona infection start to the human, they induce the body temperature, uh, body temperature uh, from, I think the, we are in the normal body temperature, 36.5 to um, 37. But uh, when the corona infection is started, the body temperature he exit 37.5 degrees Celsius. And also we uh, feel the constant coughing and sneezing. And also the severe headache and we, we have the breathing difficult. However, in the critical uh, cases, we, it causes severe pneumonia and multiple heart failure. So finally it's lead to the people mortalities. So mode of transmission. Generally, the coronavirus is transmitted three types of modes. One is res respiratory transmission, another one is aerosol transmission, another one is contact transmission. So the respiratory transmission, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, already reported the SARS-CoV-19 coronavirus. So SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus is a respiratory virus, but it's mainly transferred through the uh, respiratory droplet. So there are a large droplet uh, of virus laden mucus are the primary mode of transmission. Therefore, the say, Central Control and Prevention uh, CTC uh, advise to maintain the at least six foot distance between the you and the affected people. This thinking because the gravity forces so those have the large droplet, a large droplet uh, means the thicker than 0 0.002 inches are five microns to fall within the six feet from the infected person. So second one transmission is aerosol transmission. The virus to be spread without being hopped or sneezed in a large drops of mucus. So it means the people emit a variety of size of aerosol particles. So the some small particle is to be considered as aerosol. Uh, it can st stay suspended in the air for hours. And also it can, it can travel with the current uh, across the 10 feet of, uh, 10 of feet. So recently on, on of the study find out the New England Journal of Medicine, that virus particles that were uh, aerosols could remain in viable for up to three hours. So another, the contact transmission. This type of transmission, the infected people uh, using the objects, the other people, uh, another people touches the object then touch uh, at the pre uh, same time, they touch their nose and mouth, eyes. The virus enter the body through the mucous membrane and the infect the second person. And so far, uh, no one knows the common modes of transmission is, but seem it's possible. Once uh, the earlier, one study reported the SARS uh, coronavirus could remain viable on the surface, such as cardboard for up 24 hours and uh, other plastic items and steels for two to three days. So next, uh, another one question arising, is it transmitted through the food? But there is no evidence to the virus transmitted to the food. However, when the packing from uh, groceries and uh, takeout, uh, takeout could contain small concentration of virus particle. But in this condition, we easily remove the <clears throat> problem by uh, washing your hands after handling the groceries and take up. So then who have the highly risk for the coronavirus problem? 
So if, uh, generally the old, the adult peoples and pregnant women and children and also the who have the some of the problem, medicinal problem like heart disease, diabetes, lung disease, kidney and cancer patient, they are highly risk in group of people against the coronavirus. So the diagnosis and treatment. The World Health Organization recommends the, the specimen collecting from upper respiratory and lower respiratory tract. Then the sample was used to uh, RT-PCR analysis. But there is no specific drug that kills the coronavirus. First of the last time we use a hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of coronavirus. But the World Health Organization says that it's temporary helping the clinical trials that hydroxychloroquine to treat the COVID-19 patient. Because the hydroxychloro uh, hydroxychloroquine have some unwanted side effects. So automatically in the researcher and uh, all person focus in the natural biotic compounds. So, so the naturally exceeding compounds provide a, a hundred of uh, uh, countless of, sorry, countless of wealth of chemical diversity, including they shows the antiviral activity. So the, ef <clears throat> the effect of natural product and emergency infection disease. So the what is a natural product means the compound is isolated from natural resources like plants, animal, fungi, bacteria, nutrients, which are called as a natural products. So the natural products are the end product of metabolism. So it's called a metabolics, which perform different function in the animal as well as plant. So the metabolites is defined like intermediate and end product of metabolism. This is only small molecules. There are two types of metabolites, one is primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. So the primary metabolites is essential for plant for its growth and involved in directly for normal growth and development and reproduction. But secondary, in the case of secondary metabolites, it's not directly involved in the process process and uh, generally has a function, but it's not to the important for the organism survival. There are numerous biotic commons mainly present in the fruits, vegetables, as well as grains and legumes which provide a lot of um, basic nutritional values. So the epidemiological studies reported the high index of biotic compounds, which means uh, vitamins, phytochemicals, and mainly phenolic compounds such as flavonoids, carotenoids, as a positive influence of human health and could reduce the risk of disease. So, this um, biotic compounds exhibit in the several types of biological activities, including antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral. So, I found uh, recently one article in Harbogated Polymers. It's reported by uh, Peng Chiu, the important role of polycyclic from a traditional Chinese medicine, lung cleansing and detoxing medication against the COVID-19 pandemic. So, according to the recent data, uh, National Administration of Traditional Chinese Medicine, and the Chinese, <coughs> the tra traditional Chinese medicine name is a lung cleansing and detox medication. So, uh, this medicine, this decussion was used when the Chinese people faced the coronavirus problem. The people used this type of uh, Decussion. Like our in our Tamil Nadu, we are drinking uh, like Kabasura Kudinir. So, like this, the Chinese people are drinking like this uh, decussion. This name is China, lung cleansing and detox victim decussion. So, which main components of uh, carbohydrate polymers. So, this decussion shows the significant therapeutic effect against the COVID 19. So, specifically, uh, 244 confirmed cases 
in four prov um, provenance are administered with the trial uh, for three treatment courses between january 27 to february 5 2020 uh, more than 60 percentage of patients are uh, showing the improvement in the body so the national health commission of people republic of china is recommended the lung cleansing and detox integration to all COVID-19 patients, especially in <clears throat> combination with Western medicine, uh, medicinal treatment. So mainly in the T-tax decursion, uh, TCM decursion has 21 hairful components, which are sterile from several classical recipes in the traditional Chinese medicine. And most of the uh, uh, plants is acknowledged by the that mainly contain polysaccharide are the main active ingredients of TCM decussion. So the polysaccharide generally <clears throat> have uh, rather low toxicity and uh, contain hundreds of or even thousands of monosaccharide units. So it's an important activate, activator for in the lung cleansing and T-taxin decussion. So and also which participates the major role in the treatment of COVID-19 patient. So we know the what is polysaccharide. So it's polysaccharide means it's composed of 10 and more, more monosaccharide. So the more, the more monosaccharides are joined together with glycosidic bond, bonding. In the case of plant and polysaccharide is natural macromolecule. They, they participate there major role in the life activities. And also it exhibits several biological activities, including anti-cancer, anti-aging, and immunoregulatory activities. Moreover, the plant uh, polysaccharides also uh, reduce the blood sugar as well as lipid contents. Therefore, this type of polysaccharide-related compound is recommended for treating the cardiovascular disorder and diabetes. So in uh, as in COVID-19, the polysaccharide is uh, working in the three types of, uh, one is immunomodulatory activity and another one antioxidant and antibacterial activity. So <clears throat> in the immunomodulatory activity, since the outbreak of COVID-19, the body immune response play an important role to eliminate the virus. So the, uh, we are known the virus is intracellular parasitic non-cellular microorganism. It's, uh, so cellular immunity is playing the main role to eliminate the viral infection. So nowadays, immunomodulated tracts uh, have great attention because they possess the passive immunity, which induces uh, administration of immunomolecular tracts, can rapidly increase the cellular immunity, and also it uh, helps to fight against the viral infection. So the immune cells, such as macrophages and neutrophils, monocytes, lymphocytes, and uh, natural killer cells are the main target of immunostimulatory polysaccharide and the specific proteins. So there are several studies show that plant polysaccharide can regulate the immune system in different ways. They not only activate the immune cells, at the same time, they activate the complements and promote the production of cytokines. Thus showing <laughs> regulatory effect of the immune system in multiple ways. This figure shows the uh, immune regulatory activity from of polysaccharide isolation from some applying some natural resources. So first we extract some polysaccharide and purification, the purification through the ion exchange chromatography. Then the polysaccharide was treated against uh, natural killer cells. The cells uh, generally have the, some uh, cell <coughs> receptor, cell membrane receptor, like tool-like receptor and a complement receptor in the cell wall. So the polysaccharide easily attached to the cell wall uh, receptor 
and they enter the uh, cells and they make a production of uh, nitric oxide and uh, mRNA expression through the signaling pathways. Like <clears throat> in a, uh, usually the polysaccharide is uh, promote the uh, immunity uh, modulating activity through the NF pathways. So recently our groups reported two types of uh, scientific article. The first one is uh, inducing inflammatory response in raw cells and natural killer cells by the polysaccharide is arabinocalactone isolated from a perula cancer is through the NFPP and MARC signaling pathways. And another one reported is reported the polysaccharide was isolated from the cumin giragam in Tamil. Cumin giragam is show the immunostimulatory activity in um, nature killer cells through the NFPP pathway. So another one thing is anti-inflammatory activity. So the recently, the Lancet uh, reported the level of inflammatory factors in critical patient. So inflammatory factor means the IL-2, <clears throat> IL-7, IL-10, this type of factors uh, are higher than those without of intensive care. So which suggesting the occurrence of this cytokine stroke is really, uh, close related to the severity of COVID-19 patient. So the cytochrome is considered to be an important signal for the transformation of ordinary patient to procure is a severe and critical situation. And so, and also it's a main case of acute respiratory dis distress syndromes and the leading to the COVID-19 death. So, and the polysaccharide isolated from various natural resources, they consist of uh, galactose, glucose, and uh, ramnose. Uh, <clears throat> this type of uh, constitution showing the potent anti-inflammatory activity. And also this type of uh, polysaccharide constitution suppress the cytokine chrome and also effectively treating the mild COVID-19 patients by uh, flagging the mild cases to severe cases stages. So in recently, this uh, the polysaccharide is isolated from the prone algae, Darbinaria decorans, it show the anti-inflammatory activity against some <clears throat> in vitro in vivo studies. So another one thing is antioxidant activity. An antioxidant activity is important pharmacological properties. So when the antioxidant balance is broken by inflammatory factors such as any, I think we some of the foreign particles enter the um, body and the, our body automatically detect the pathogens um, and improve the acute immunity. At the same time, the body will produce a stress response, which leading to cell uh, oxidative damage and develop the multi-system disease. So there are several reporters uh, such as the many polysaccharide poses the anti oxidative properties, which may put critical to the multiple pharmacological activities. So we are reporting one more paper in recently 2019, the polysaccharide isolated from uh, spiral knock latency show the potent anti accident activity. So another one is the polysaccharide and cut microphyreta. So the composition of intestine microphyreta closely related to the human health. So they play a major role to maintain the physiological balance. So the intestinal microphyreta perform as a protective mediator during the emerging infectious disease by uh, primary alveolar macrophage function. 
and also it uh, show the modulating cut microparietal which reduce the ventilator associated pneumonia and enteritis. So in the yearly study show that polysaccharide significantly promote the growth of my <coughs> acromensia is a beneficial bacterium that enhances the host immunity. So uh, this the from the uh, last uh, fifth slide we conclude the natural compound, especially in the polysaccharide, is how the could process to uh, against the uh, emergency infection disease through the immu <coughs> immunomodulatory activity and as well as uh, antioxidant activity and the microparietal, this action which enhances the body to fight against uh, some emergency infection disease. And it's a um, general preventive action for corona infection. So first one is wash your hands. The, uh, when we, we go to wash your hands, so we before and during after preparing the food and also before eating and we after toilet use and <clears throat> after handling the animals and the animal waste and when carrying the sick person wash your hand with the soap solution and after running water for 30 seconds after that you feel is not visibility or 30 so you use with 70 percentage of alcohol for washing dry your hand and also in general uh, <coughs> prevention when we feel hopping and sneezing we maintain that we face uh, with fit palaxed elbow or tissues and put the tissue in close to the pin immediately after use and also we avoid some contact with live, wild, and domestic farm animals. And we should avoid some just, uh, contact with sympathetic person. And we should avoid spitting and in public places. And uh, one more thing, keep, it, keep distance at least one meter between yourself and uh, anyone who cough or sneeze. And the food practice of food safety. So using different chopping poles and knives for pre, uh, for better for prevent the infection. And wash your hands between the handling in the raw and cooked foods. And the animal and animal product handling, wear the protective gowns and gloves, mask and facial protection while handling the animals and the animal products. So after that, the product clads and the <clears throat> upon daily wash and leave it a work site. So how does, uh, we discuss here, how the South Korea treating the coronavirus without a lockdown. So in this table show the uh, statistics, uh, today's statistics, I think around uh, from <clears throat> January 26 to uh, today, uh, we are a confirmed cases only 12,653 12, cases. So uh, from these cases, 11,370 person has already teachers and only 1,054 person only under the isolation. And also the death mortality person, uh, person also 282. So how to control the um, coronavirus without the lockdown? So the South Korea uh, <coughs> response, the three statistic pillars. The first one is fast and free testing and expensing the tracing technology and isolation, mandatory is isolation. So how South Korea is suppressing COVID-19? So trace and test and treat. So the first case in South Korea was detected in January 20, and the first death also confirmed in February 20, without imposing lockdown. So 
they may they have some four type of policy the first one policy is the <clears throat> transparency and sharing the updated information so uh, here the ctc the korean center for disease control simultaneously share the information through the media and where the patient is infected uh, where the patient is admitted uh, like this detail simultaneously uh, sent everyone in through the mobile phones and the internet like and second policy is containment and uh, mitigation so the first case is identified in china to, uh, in december 30 and uh, infected people say immediately isolated them in the transmission so track all suspected cases in trace all the confirmed cases so here they give like one type of <clears throat> in, uh, in south korea according to south korea every people have one type of identity so this identity card is used for all purpose like uh, we buying credit card or anything so this card is connected with all things so suppose uh, we are going to um, other places through the buses anything so the people easily traced uh, trace out through the card and third one policy is the treatment system the, the peoples are uh, get some uh, some information from the last outbreak of MERS and also they have some experience from the MERS outbreak then the, the fourth poli uh, policy is fast tracking and suspected cases so in the initially the people and the infected people is identified so at that time the accelerator produce uh, emergency diagnostics weekly uh, 4 lakh 30 thousand kids and also the Korea's, uh, korea has more than 100 labs working around to the clock daily testing capacity and 20 thousand has been increasing keeping the COVID-19 at per day. So and also the test kits, the Korea is sent the test kits to 47 uh, countries to officially. So our Tamil Nadu also uh, earlier we <coughs> get the PCR test, testing kits from the Korean government. And South Korea can cure the lockdown without a model or problem. So quick response. Uh, the first cases, in the case of first cases reported in January 20, the government ordered the practice like starting producing a coronavirus test kit in a mass level. Within two weeks, the country will produce more than one lakh test kits per day. And also testing the rapid response for Grateful because it's a second key of feature of Korean uh, South Korea success. The testing a lot and the uh, testing effectively. Here the testing is without cost. The <clears throat> another one is the man, uh, mass manufacturing of tests. The government allowed successfully test significant part of population for coronavirus rolling out over 600 testing center and making testing easily and available. And also the information is transparency. So here, <clears throat> the tested people, that uh, mode of transmission and authorities, it's spread from the <clears throat> public very uh, transparently. And the public information we can earlier and experience from MERS. I mean, uh, the South Korea is familiar with their wearing mask, face masks, and practice foot hygiene. And also, the government sent some in text to a resistant informing them when the case is discovered nearly or where I uh, find out the cases and where they allow to tracking data like this information is transparently sent to every people. 
so there is conclusion so from from the my presentation we we should follow the social distance and we eat healthily food and we follow the good sanitation and follow our traditional culture and medical practice which can be prevent from the emerging disease infection then i would like to thank dr uh, professor sangran new department of food marine science and technology kannu munji national university and uh, my phd uh, mentor dr enam bravo assistant professor department of animal health and management alappa university karikudi they are providing uh, more uh, uh, information for, and more <coughs> facilities uh, for my research as well as uh, my stipend also this is my research team thank you thank you dr pallisamy thank you very much thank you sir uh, very nice presentation uh, we have shared lot of information and participants also has uh, raised a good number of question uh, i will read one by one and i request okay, you to uh, share with our knowledge okay sir okay sir okay sir is is corona affect uh, the patients with the thyroid problem thyroid problem ah uh. uh but uh, i don't have this uh, idea but <clears throat> but there is no restriction i think uh, any people uh, first initially uh, we find out some older age people is affected by corona but nowadays in the uh, uh, lower age people also affected by corona but in the case of uh, thyroid problem uh, i don't know but the Yeah. heavy uh, risk of people in the heart disease some uh, already in the problem diabetes this people is a uh, possibility to get the corona problem but in the case of uh, thyroid uh, i don't know the right information so the next question is how hydroxy chloroquine kill the virus how hydroxy chloroquine uh, kill the virus you need the mechanism yes sir mechanism oh, the exact mechanism right sir but the hydroxy chloroquine is already used for uh, so Oh, the correct mechanism it's uh, sorry sir i uh, in the correct mechanism i in the mechanism i don't know sir but the hydroxy chloroquine when we uh, take the hydroxy chloroquine in tablets it uh, enhances the immune activity and uh, fight against the uh, Uh, covid 19 but at the same time the hydroxy chloroquine is uh, possible to cause uh, some side effects therefore the recently the inhaled by who so the what are the possible side effects of uh, hydroxy chloroquine hydroxy chloroquine uh, possible side effects uh, mostly i sir mostly the hydroxy hydrochloro uh, hydroxy hydroxy chloroquine you show the headache and the nausea and the vomiting and stomach pain and the last <coughs> and the lots of weight sir
sir. Uh, sir, uh, another participant has raised the question: uh, How hmm. kabasura kudini differs from lung cleansing and detoxifying decoctions? Ah, uh, yes, the lung. <coughs> the it is mostly similar so in in this uh, situation in december something in china the people used uh, 21 types of herbal medicine uh, like uh, tikashan so this tikashan is tested in four provenance i think four provenance they give the good report i think they enhance the <clears throat> they enhance the uh, some immune related <coughs> activities so similar to kabasura kudini uh, our kabasura kudini prepare by some natural products similarly the chinese people is uh, prepare the uh, <coughs> lung tick cleansing and tikasin uh, tea tax vein tikashan by 21 herbal products so these are the this majorly these are these product are majorly used for uh, preparation of this discussion okay, okay so thank you um, thank you sir then uh, another patient does uh, whether covid 19 can be cured by ayurvedic medicine is uh it's not sure little sir, but it's uh, it's promote the immune uh, activity so we have we get the immune challenges to against the coronavirus uh, that I, we take the natural products are ayurvedic they automatically they enhance our post of the immune uh, system of our uh, body so it uh, fight against uh, some uh, viral infection but it's it's not Surely we tell it's uh, cured by the Ayurvedic. And another participant asked uh, to explain about the reverse quarantine. Uh, wave. What? Uh, uh, sorry. Reverse quarantine. Reverse quarantine means, sir? Uh, uh, I, I don't understand. Now, okay. now people know the government wave. does quarantine sorry, sorry. Um, people know. Second wave, you you mean by second wave, sir? Maybe maybe a secondary. Uh, one. So uh, in the con quarantine. yeah reverse corona, but uh, I think if the uh, uh, how the, by... maybe the mechanism of uh, reverse quarantine. So reverse quarantine, I don't understand, but I understand like this. It's a second wave. It's uh, like uh, say uh, already uh, we faced one. Pandemic disease, like uh, say was, like, yeah, the Spanish flu. Like in the first, initially they did not show the any high mortality, any any high symptoms. But second wave, yeah, at the same time, the people are faced the second uh, wave. That time, the <clears throat> in, uh, pandemic disease caused more mortality as well as the developed symptoms. Similar, uh, so similarly, the COVID-19 also, the first wave, uh, suppose we face a second wave means we get a more uh, uh, severe problems. Okay, sir. Um, another participant asked uh, the explanation about the effect of herd community. In a, sir? Effect of herd community. Third community. Oh, yeah. Third community. So I don't understand this question. So third community. Just, just expose people to the virus. That's all. That, um, the, so that um, uh, the virus. Will ah, be ah, yeah. Third, third. I think third community. Effect of third community. No, no. Third. H E R D. H E R D. Third. Third community. Oh. Exposing people to the uh, yeah. virus. Uh, so that hmm. uh, all people will have um, a small dose of uh, infection and they will develop uh, uh, immunity. That is the uh, third community, yes. Uh, there is question related to that. Okay, sir, we will pass on to the next one. Uh, how okay, diabetic patients are uh, more vulnerable to COVID-19? Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. 
how you ask ah, how yeah, yeah. Uh, how diabetic how? patients are more mm -hmm. vulnerable mm -hmm. to covid 19 mm -hmm. because they already have the low immunity power yes sir. low immunity power so it's easily <clears throat> uh, get the infection from by coronavirus so <clears throat> Hello, sir. Sir, another question. What about the identification of uh, proteomics in the context of COVID research? What means, uh, sir, please spell. Uh, what I... about the identification of proteomics in the context of COVID research? Sorry, sir. Proteomics, I think. Proteomics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, sir. I'm not favor in this field. Proteomics, I know. I don't know. Okay, okay, okay sir. Then, uh, what are the polysaccharides boost the immune system? And ah. uh, what is the source mm. of uh, this? I think you have given ah. a good number of examples. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, the polysaccharide is isolated from any only natural prey. Like example, we isolate from plants and seaweed and sea archin and the small uh, fungus like this. So mostly the <clears throat> polysaccharide is uh, fecine and uh, calactan like this uh, group of molecules that uh, enhance the immunomodulatory activity. Then how effective is plasma therapy in treating COVID-19? Any idea about uh, plasma therapy? Sir? Uh, no, sir. Plasma therapy, I don't know, sir. Okay, okay. Um, what are the primary symptoms of COVID-19 hmm. in India? Primary symptoms. Primary symptoms. High temperature is primary and is yeah. uh, frequently sneezing and huffing. Hmm. And uh, headache and headache and, uh, and, and also we feel like breathing is very difficult. The first factor is temperature, the high temperatures. Uh, second one is uh, sneezing, the frequent sneezing and hopping. And the third one is uh, breathing is more difficult. What is meant, sir, uh, uh, if there's anybody interested to directly talk to the resource person, please raise your hand. We will unmute you. Okay, clear. Yeah. Sir. Uh, sir. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, I'm uh, Tamil. Sir, I'm a sir. 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 Sir, I'm a sir. 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 I'm a அதாவது ஆசானி சீக் பத்தி ஃபுல்லா சொல்றேன் அத பத்தி சொல்லுங்கனா ஃபுல்லா எப்படி செயல்படுது இந்த மாதிரி கேக்குறீங்களா சார் ஆமா சார் ஆமா சார் அது மாதிரி தான் எனக்கு அது மேக்ஸिमम ஃபுல்லா எனக்கு வந்து ஆசானி சீக் பத்தி ஃபுல்லா தெரியல சார் பட் அட் தி சேம் டைம் வந்து நம்ம அந்த மாதிரி நேச்சுரலா கிடைக்க கூடிய ஹோமியோபதி இந்த மாதிரி ட்ரீட்மென்ட்ஸ் எடுக்கும் போதே என்ன ஆகும்னா சார் 
நம்ம உடம்புல போயிட்டு நம்மளுடைய நோய் எதிர்ப்பு சக்தியை முதல்ல வந்து பூஸ்டப் பண்ணும் சார் பூஸ்டப் பண்ணா கொஞ்சம் அதை வந்து அதிகப்படுத்தும் ஸோ நம்ம அதிகப்படுத்தும் போது நம்ம அதிகப்படுத்தும் போது நமக்கு எந்த விதமான ஒரு நோய் கிருமி தாக்குதல் வந்தாலும் அதை எதிர்த்து தாக்கக்கூடிய அளவுக்கு நம்மளுடைய எதிர்ப்பு சக்தியை வந்து அதிகரிக்கும் சார் ஸோ ஆனா நம்ம சொல்ற நம்ம சொல்ற இந்த இப்ப நம்ம நிறைய வந்து ட்ரக் நம்ம நான் தமிழ்நாட்டுல வந்து நிறைய இது சொல்றாங்க இப்ப ஹோம் ஒய் பத்தி இந்த மாதிரி நிறைய சொல்றாங்க பட் இது வந்து ஃபுல்லா வந்து கியூர் பண்ணுதான்னு வந்து இது நாள் வரை எதுவும் ப்ரூவ் பண்ண முடியல ஸோ ஃபுல்லா கியூர் பண்ணுதான்னு ஏன்னா இது வந்து இன்னொரு ஒரு ஃபேக்ட் என்னன்னா ஸோ இந்த கொரோனா வைரஸ் வந்து அந்த தன்னைத்தானே அது மாத்திக்கிறது அதோடைய இதை வந்து ஒவ்வொரு இடத்த இப்ப வந்து சைனால இருக்கக்கூடிய கொரோனா வைரஸ் வந்து இங்க உள்ள இது வந்து இப்ப நம்ம தமிழ்நாட்டுல இருக்க கொரோனா வைரஸ்க்கு டிஃப்ரென்ஸ் இருக்கு அதாவது அந்த சூழ்நிலைக்கு தகுந்த மாதிரி தன்னைத்தானே மாத்திக்கிறதுனால இதுக்கு வந்து ஒரு கரெக்ட் கரெக்டான வந்து ஒரு ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் ஒரு டேப்லெட் இதை வந்து நம்மளால கரெக்டா நம்மளால சொல்ல முடியல இதுதான் இதுல வந்து இருக்கக்கூடிய ப்ராப்ளம் அதோடைய மரபணுக்கள் வந்து அப்போ தன்னைத்தானே அப்பப்ப வந்து இடத்துக்கு தகுந்த மாதிரி மாறிக்குது சார் சோ அதனால இப்ப வந்து மோஸ்ட்லி வந்து இப்போ நம்ம நேச்சுரலா கிடைக்கக்கூடிய எந்த விதமான ஃபுட்டு எல்லாமே வந்து நம்ம சாப்பிட்டாலும் எது எடுத்துக்கிட்டாலும் அது வந்து நம்மளுடைய இம்யூன் சிஸ்டத்தை அந்த நோய் எதிர்ப்பு சக்தி வந்து அதிகரிக்கும் ஸோ அது வந்து இந்த கொரோனாவுக்கு மட்டும் இல்லை எந்த ஒரு எமர்ஜென்சி டிசீஸ் இன்ஃபெக்ஷன் டிசீஸ் எதுனாலையும் எதிர்த்து தாக்கக்கூடிய அளவுக்கு நம்மளுடைய எதிர்ப்பு மண்டலத்தை வந்து ச சரியா வச்சுக்கிறோம் சார் ஓகே சார் சார் ஆயுர்வேதிக் மெடிசன் வந்து இதுக்கு ப்ரிஃபர் ஆகுமா சார் ஃபியூச்சரா ரிசர்ச் பண்ணாங்கன்னா அது ஆயுர்வேதிக் மெடிசன் வந்து கியூர் பண்ண முடியுமா சார் கோவிட் நைன்டீன் கியூர் பண்ண முடியுமா நம்ம கரெக்டா முடியுமான்னு சொல்லணும் ஆனா பாசிபிள் இருக்கு சார் ஏன்னா இதுக்கு முன்னால இந்த முத முதல்ல நமக்கு வந்து இது வந்து இது ஒரு தொற்று கிருமி ஆனா இதுக்கு முன்னால வந்து ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி பதினெட்டுல வந்து ஒரு பெண்டமிக் டிசீஸ் நமக்கு ஸ்பானிஷ் புழுன்னு சொல்லி ஒரு பெண்டமிக் டிசீஸ் வந்து அஃபெக்ட் ஆயிருக்கு சார் ஸோ அந்த அந்த டிசீஸுக்கு வந்து இன்னொரு வரை கரெக்டான ஒரு இது வந்து ட்ரீட்மெண்ட்டுக்கான ஒரு இது கிடைக்கல ஸோ அந்த டைம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா மெடிக் நம்ம டாக்டர்ஸ் என்ன இது மாதிரி நமக்கு வந்து சொல்லியிருக்காங்கன்னா ஆயுர்வேதா இந்த மாதிரி இருக்கக்கூடிய ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் வந்து அவங்க அப்போவே ரெக்கமெண்ட் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க இது வந்து நைன்டீன் எயிட்டீனில் வந்து நடந்தது இது வந்து இப்போ இருக்கக்கூடிய கொரோனாவோட கம்பேர் பண்ணும்போது அது ஃபஸ்ட்டு உலக போகும்போது நடந்தது அந்த அந்த பேண்டமிக் டிசீஸ் வந்து ஸோ அப்போவே வந்து அப்போ வந்து அந்த அளவுக்கு ஒரு மெடிக் மெடிக்கல் ரிலேட்டடாக வந்து வளர்ச்சி இல்லை அந்த அளவுக்கு அந்த டயத்துலேயே வந்து அதை கண்ட்ரோல் பண்ணுறதுக்கு வந்து ஆயுர்வேதிக் இதுகளை வந்து யூஸ் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க ஸோ மேபி வந்து இப்போ நம்ம இருக்கக்கூடிய இந்த கொரோனா இன்ஃபெக்ஷனுக்கு வந்து இன் லேட்டர் வந்து நம்ம ரிசர்ச் பண்ணி வேணால் இதில் வந்து ப்ரூவ் பண்ண வாய்ப்பு இருக்கு சார் ஓகே சார் தேங்க்யூ சார் தேங்க்யூ சார் தேங்க்யூ சார் தேங்க்யூ சார் எனி கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் தி participants okay then we will conclude the uh, session uh, thank you dr pallisamy uh, it is a very nice uh, presentation you have shared yes, lot of information and in fact in the past 3 uh, uh, days uh, we discussed a lot of things but your session is uh, um, really a different one uh, you have shared many uh, information regarding the emerging infectious disease then uh, re emerging uh, infectious diseases like uh, cholera malaria tuberculosis and uh, gonorrhea and the six uh, major uh, factors which are uh, influencing um the infectious uh, disease and very particularly human uh, demographic and uh, behaviors uh, then like uh, sexual uh, unsafe uh, uh, sexual behavior uh, then other factors like agriculture production and economic development and land use uh, pattern then microbial adaptation and uh, change evolution of antibiotic resistance uh, so like that uh, you rightly point out all the uh, factors and we have also shared a wide spectrum of antibiotics and infectious diseases and its causative agents and your uh, presentation covered nearly uh, a century of uh, 100 years uh, history of various uh, pandemic uh, uh, diseases uh, 
uh, around the world. And you have also mentioned in detail the information about the high risk groups, then uh, hygienic uh, practices, the diagnosis and uh, treatment methods, uh, and the bioactive commons, uh, 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 synthesized from the natural uh, products. And uh, you have also um, uh, shared uh, slides about uh, the 21 herbal compound used in traditional Chinese medicine, as well as some compounds in India. Then uh, the synthesis of uh, polysaccharides in its role in uh, immunomodulatory and uh, immunoregulatory activity, uh, the importance of cellular immunity and uh, immune modulatory drug. Um, really, we have given a lot of information and all the informations are um, really yeah, very impressive. Uh, they have also mentioned the role of uh, phytocompounds uh, in suppressing the cytokines and uh, cytokine uh, strong, then anti-inflammatory and uh, anti-accident activity of polysaccharides uh, and its uh, uh, derivatives. So, so we have a, uh, uh, we have gained a um, lot of information through your uh, knowledge sharing. Uh, and finally, you have um, your slides regarding how uh, COVID is uh, uh, managed or handled in South uh, Korea. You have shared very uh, interesting information, um, like the South Korea, uh, Korean policy level decisions to Corona and its uh, testing kits, importance of transparency in uh, information uh, uh, exchange. Uh, so a uh, lot of things, uh, in fact, uh, you have learned so many things from you. The session is very interesting and participants have also raised a number of uh, questions um, and you offer the best answers. Um, we are really very grateful uh, to have a uh, resource uh, person like you. So from the bottom of the heart, I thank you on behalf of our Malaysia Tewal College and uh, Department of um, Zoology. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you, I thank also you. thank our college correspondent and the principal for their uh, constant encouragement. Our head of the department, uh, Professor uh, Onandavali, and uh, our collaborator, uh, Dr. Brinda from Malhaba University, uh, and our fellow colleagues like Dr. Jan Paul, Dr. Siva Kumar, and uh, Dr. Kotikayan. And I should not forget to thank uh, uh, one Mr. Uh, Professor Anandar Krishnan, the head of the Department of Information Technology of our college. Uh, he is the technical coordinator of uh, all the four webinars. Without him, we should not have uh, arranged uh, the webinar in such a wonderful way. So I have to thank Dr. Uh, Professor Anandar Krishnan also. And I have to uh, thank the participants from India as well as uh, uh, from overseas countries, totally uh, some 769 participants have registered in India as well as from 10 other uh, countries. And out of uh, that, uh, nearly 400 participants are uh, assistant professors, associate professors, and professors, um, and research scholars. And apart from that, uh, students and public who are also uh, re registered. So uh, the webinar has uh, really created a very good impact on uh, various uh, uh, scientific information. So I have to thank uh, everyone again and again. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Pandisami, sir, would you like to share anything else or please conclude the session? I'll conclude, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your opportunity. Thank you, sir. Dr. Brinda, ma'am, just raise your hand. I want to show you to the participants because we've helped a lot to pitch the all the resource person. Ma'am, just uh, raise your hand. Ah, uh, This is uh, Dr. Brinda from uh, al Khabai University. In fact, uh, um, they helped a lot in uh, uh, arranging the resource person and she also supported in so many ways for the successful uh, completion of this uh, webinar. I have to thank her 
uh, from my uh, bottom of the heart. So thank you, ma'am. Okay, participant, we will conclude the session. Um, we have already posted the um, feedback form. Um, I request all the participants to fill the feedback form before one o'clock. And uh, we just please wait for uh, 10 days. Uh, we will review manually, we'll review all the feedback forms, uh, check your name, spelling, and should name, and all everything. It will take at least 10 days for us to uh, complete that work. So after 10 days, we will send you the certificate uh, through email. So all the participants who submitted the feedback form uh, will definitely receive the uh, certificate and separate certificate for each uh, webinar. Okay. Thank you one and all again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir.